morning and welcome to New Heights. I invite you to stand with us as we sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. trying to get to tonight, wasn't I? Amen. Good to have all of you here. Thank you. you may be seated, and uh, thank you for bearing with me, Brother Mike. I didn't have the right service. I had you up for tonight already, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we got that around. Thank you for bearing with me this morning. Well, it's good to see all of you here. Thank everyone for joining with us. Thank you for joining by the way of live stream and by the way of telephone. I want to say, first of all, I'm uh, sorry about the, those who called in on the phone line. We had some, we didn't realize, and I know the volume's been down a little bit on the media, and uh, we had a button that got flipped and pushed that we didn't know about, and uh, we got all that worked around yesterday and got that taken care of. And if there's ever an issue, just please call. That's how I knew that there was, no, on the phone line, that there was nothing. The only thing they heard was the preaching on Wednesday night, and uh, I had about three or four people say, hey, we didn't hear the service, couldn't hear anything. So we got that squared around, and so hopefully that'll be together. And uh, I talked with them about the camera. We're trying to get the new camera so we can get that up and get the other things in and all that. And uh, uh, we went ahead and upgraded the microphones that we had in here. I know we was having some issues. We did that this week, and uh, those things don't come cheap. And uh, that was about $2,000 getting those in. But the other ones, the frequencies had gone out on them. And uh, we tried to replace them with some that just were not working. So we getting that taken care of and getting money back on that. And then we went ahead and had that work out to where we could get all that in. So you pray as we try to get all these things together. And they were telling us at the sound store uh, on um, uh, Thursday or Friday, whenever it was, Thursday, and they said everything's hard to uh, get in, and so, but anyway, you pray we can get all that around, and I uh, just want to make those notes to you. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Thank all of our guests for being here, our visitors. Thank you for being here, and let's go over just a few uh, prayer requests and everything, and uh, we'll uh, just remember them. It's good to see Miss Deborah here this morning. Continue to pray for her. Dennis, good to see you as well, praying for you and Daniel. And then continue to pray for Frankie Wright. And then, of course, Otis's brother, Louis Ains, and then Charles Garnett, his brother-in-law. Um, brother 
and continue to pray for the Wayne Collins family. And Wayne went home to be with the Lord. And uh, continue to pray for Cynthia, if you would. And we're praying for her. And pray for the family. And then continue. I got to see Galen. And if you would remember him and continue to remember him in prayer. And then Larry, that's as well, Cynthia's brother. Remember them in prayer. And then pray for Carolyn Young. Her surgery will be this Friday. Will you begin to pray? I trust you've already been praying. And I pray that you will continue to pray. And um, ask you to do that if you would. Continue to pray for Larry and, of course, Carolyn Sigmund. Be mindful of them. And uh, Larry's sister down in Kinston, if you would continue to pray for her and her healing after her surgeries and everything. And then Lila and her mother, Jamie. And remember Sonny. Sonny called me this morning. He's not here. And he said, Pastor, I'm, I'm, he's got congestion and everything. And I said, well, you pray for Pastor too. I'll pray for you. You pray for me because I've been battling that this week. And, uh, and then Jean, pray for, continue to pray for her. She has stage four Parkinson's, uh, stage two, excuse me. And if you'd be mindful of that for her. And then Billy, their son, Miss Mears, uh, pray for her. And uh, she's not here today, but remember her in prayer. And Michael and Jane Hudson, she always asks prayer for them. And then Miss Burton, if you'd uh, pray for her. I spoke with her. She's having some heart issues and then kidney issues. If you would pray much for her in special prayer. And then Brother Raymond, continue to pray for him. His daughter, Theresa Stone, be mindful of that as well. Brandon and Ashley Shemali, uh, if you would, remember, uh, remember uh, them in prayer. And then David Pruitt, that's Barbara's uh, brother, and treatments for infection. And, and, and if you would as well, uh, pray for Grace's friend. She texted me last night. Paul, he's in India, and he watches, he watches our live stream every Sunday morning in India. Now, it's probably around 10 or 11 o'clock, I presume, in India. But he's on watching, uh, every, and he asked if we'd pray for them in their country. Pray for uh, him, and then pray for his church. And they got a mission conference, he said, in their church in October. And, of course, India, uh, if you would just pray for uh, they're not able to have services. They've got churches all shut down. And, of course, it's difficult for Christians in that country. And so if you would pray for him as well. And then pray uh, for uh, Cindy Shepherd if you, she watches online. And, uh, and we got her on the prayer list. And she asked for prayer and sent messages. And Cindy wants you to know we're praying for you and thinking about you. And continue to pray for Angela Hopkins. Or I covered all those as quick as I could. And is there anyone or anything that we need to mention this morning that needs to be brought to our attention uh, as we, uh, as we uh, pray this morning? Anything. Y yes, Miss Mears. Okay, who's going to have a surgery on Thursday? Jane. Oh, Jane's going to have, okay. Jane's going to have um, uh, surgery on Thursday. So if you'd pray for her, she has the cancer and she's battling that. And Miss Mears, we mentioned you as well as a moment ago, Michael praying for him too. And uh, all right. All right, is anyone else? Doris. Louise and Dorsey, all right, Compton, yes, remember them. And then pray for Thomas Bailey, if you would, please, and Brenda, and continue to pray for them. And, of course, Bill and Ann Williams, be mindful of them. Pray for Lonnie, amen. Of course, we all know Lonnie, and we know he needs prayer, amen. And I look back, and I miss him. And uh, if you'd pray, if you'd pray for Lonnie, all right, Any, anyone else, all right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, ask God to meet the needs, and ask God to bless in the service and the time together, and uh, uh, just, uh, ask God to just work in a great and mighty way today in our hearts and our lives. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and be in your presence, and God, we thank you so much for your goodness and grace, and God, we thank you for so great a salvation 
Lord, we love you today, and we thank you for who you are and what you've accomplished in and through our lives. God, I pray that you'll be magnified. For the needs that's been mentioned today, God, you, know, you already know about them, but we're just bearing the burdens, as you tell us in Galatians chapter number 6. We're bearing one another's burdens, and we're bringing them to the foot of the cross this morning. And God, will you intervene, will you work, and will you be magnified in every instance this morning for your honor and glory. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Let me say this, uh, Brother Johnny, or I see you back there, so you're going to get your name called, amen. If you get a couple guest cards, if you would, and make sure our guest over here, and then Samuel has one. Uh, pen and card and you can fill those out if you would please and then uh, drop that in the offering plate when it comes by that'll help us better know you and be able to drop you a line and thank you so much for being here today and being our guest here at New Heights Baptist Church we certainly uh, thank you for taking time thank all of you that are joining in we we have a number of people uh, that uh, that are uh, been watching and it's it's amazing how many people that have been watching across the country and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about our the outreach it's not just our churches our church but it's other churches as well and I was talking to a preacher yesterday and he said there's one thing about it the gospel is going out around the world and, uh, and I was sharing with him that Paul watches from India and uh, and every Sunday he's on there on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page watching that. And I trust he's being helped and encouraged by that. All right, this time we're going to have a special in song. And I believe Sister Kathy is ready to sing. Amen. Looking forward. I know she'll be a blessing to you this morning.
All right, this morning I invite you once again to stand with us as we sing Love Lifted Me. wonderful love. <clears throat> if you'd pray for me, I'd greatly appreciate it in the very aspect of my voice. I have been fighting allergies. If you heard me on Wednesday night, uh, man, I tell you, I had a rough way to go. And, uh, and they, the, the people that were here and those that listened by live, live stream, <laughs> by the way of media, uh, I had some call me after service and says, Pray for me. I have, you know, well, I won't tell you who did that, Billy Canoy, but anyway, making fun of my voice. And I, and, uh, but in, anyway, uh, you, you pray for me. I'm supposed to sing this week, all, all week at the sword. And so I'm asking if you would remember me in prayer. We leave tomorrow morning and, uh, early I do. And, uh, uh, and a couple of the boys are going with me, and uh, we're headed to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Now, uh, if you'll notice in your bulletin, I put there in the second paragraph uh, how you can how you can listen. Now, you say 8 p.m. on the services. I'm giving you Eastern Standard Time, okay? Because I'm going to be. You go, man. They're starting church late. No, it's just because. I will be in the central time zone instead of trying to go through and you figure out and get messed up on that because we started printing the bulletin. I run through, we went the wrong way on the time, and we had to stop. I was like, well, that ain't right. And uh, I was talking with Sister V. I said, hold on just a minute because I was talking to her about that. She was asking. So Monday through Thursday at 8 p.m., if you go to Facebook, and search Sword of the Lord. And then, of course, like you would on Facebook, hit the live. You'd be able to watch those services beginning tomorrow night through th Thursday evening. And now, they will not be archived, meaning archived like on our church website. You can go and go to video archive, and you can watch any service that's been here prior over the last number of months since we've been live streaming. 
Now, you will not be able to do that with a sword, and you can go to Facebook because of licensing things and everything. They will not be archived. So if you want to watch it, you have to watch it at the designated times in order to, uh, in order to hear the service. And there are going to be some good preaching, and some of the preachers couldn't come that he had scheduled because of the conflict of moving from July to, uh, to August, and some of the musicians and things are not able to be there. So you pray for those who are singing and working, and a great lineup, Dr. John Jenkins, and, I, and I, Mike, I'm, I'm, I knew Joe will be there on Thursday night if you want to listen to him. And uh, a couple preachers, it'll be two preachers each service, and it'll be music, a preacher in each hour, and uh, at 8 o'clock and at 9 o'clock, and then in the morning, at, you can watch that at 11 a.m. It'll begin there at 10, but 11 a.m., just look at the, uh, the bulletin, 11 a.m., tune in from 11 to 12, it'll be music and a preacher, and then from 12 to 1, there'll be music and another preacher preaching, and uh, it'll be uh, that will be through Tuesday through Thursday, so Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning. So if you pray for Dr. Smith and pray for the singers, uh, they'll be singing, pray for me if you would. Uh, they shifted the month, and my allergies came. It, I always, every, when I'd fly back from Washington State when I was there, last year in July, I started having problems, if you remember. And they moved it to August, and I thought, well, hallelujah, we got it out of July, I won't have no problem. And here it comes, amen. And uh, so I really need your prayers, and uh, if you would, please. Now, uh, don't forget, uh, let me just run through a couple things here right fast as well. Uh, I wanted to mention that about the Facebook, the sword. Uh, some have asked about the church directory. Uh, we're holding off on that last fall. Uh, Lisa came to me about that, and we're re, uh, doing a lot of things and getting and putting computerizing things and getting all that in place. And so uh, understand once we get all that in and we're working on the data sheet, uh, Deborah and I are, uh, to get that together so we can have you fill out the pertinent information that we need to get into the computer, and we'll have that and then we'll do that. So I've had two or three people ask why we do not have a directory. I had someone come to me and said, I was told that you said not to print a directory. I said, I did. Because when we get everything around, then we'll do that, okay? We'll get all the information around and get everything updated. And so then we'll get that out so we have all up-to-date information because we had some other people joining, talking about joining. I held off for those reasons. So we'll get all that together. And so anyway, uh, I wanted to make your uh, uh, just announcement of that as well. Don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, well, well, in which way we're going? I got ahead of myself. Honoring, <laughs> all right. Uh, honoring Miss V's birthday today. The basket's over here. Put cards and gifts. You can bring those up till tonight. And then tomorrow, be taking that to her. And if you, uh, if ladies, if you, uh, there's some that said they'd like to go, any of the ladies that would like to go, if you'd contact Miss Christie and be driving down and, uh, and, and dropping off everything to Sister V for her birthday and honoring her. And I talked with her last night, and she says, thank you. She said, Pastor, you shouldn't do this. I said, no, we're going to do it. Amen. And if Dr. Venable's live, we'd be doing it, and I think we need to do that and honor, honor you. And uh, so make sure you get everything in tonight. Don't forget the service tonight at 6 o'clock as well. And then don't forget the revival with Dr. Joe Arthur. Uh, it'll be uh, August the 26th, 27th, and 28th. And be mindful of that. And then Brother uh, Greg Lentz will be with us as well on August the 30th. And we look forward to that. And, and uh, you pray for every aspect of the meeting there if you will and looking forward to it and we got letters out for that to some pastors letting them know and um, and everything as the ushers are coming let me read a card here uh, just for a moment said thank thank you pastor terry and christy thank you for driving such a long way to visit with us in visitation night it meant so much to us we think of uh we think of other people 
who couldn't come but sent good wishes to us. Thanks to them, too. Uh, take care of yourselves. We love y'all. Dear church, we want to thank everyone for every thought and every prayer during the passing of my brother Wayne. I know he was saved, and he is shouting it out with others. Continue to pray for us and all his family. We love you all, Cynthia and Johnny. And that card comes from them. And you continue to pray for them if you would. Brother Marty, if you'd step to the platform this morning, and uh, if you would, and if you would lead us in a word of prayer this morning for the offering, I'd appreciate that, my brother. Lord, we want to thank you for your blessings and being so good to us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come back to your house again on this beautiful day just to worship you and praise your name. Lord, we ask on behalf of each request is mentioned. I pray, Lord, you minister to each yes. one according to your will. I pray, Lord, you just bless the remainder of the service. Bless the speaker, Lord. Give him the words that we need. Pray, Lord, you bless this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, praise the Lord. Amen. You might need to bring that down just a little bit. I don't know. I'll you know, get everything set and, uh, and everything this morning. If you would take and take your Bible and go to the book of Luke, and Luke chapter number Luke chapter number 23, Luke chapter number 23, let me get organized right here just a little bit this morning, and Luke chapter number 23, get all my papers around and stuff around and get my Bible open and uh, look forward to what God has for us today in the Word of God. We've been going through the elements of of, of uh, these moments with the master, and we'll finish up. We'll finish up next week uh, with that, and uh, and moments with the master. I have one more sermon I've been working on, and we'll finish out with that. I've truly enjoyed going through this. I trust it's been a help to you as we look to look about elements of meeting with the Lord and being mindful of. Uh, the very aspect of the very aspect of uh, meeting and talking and meeting with the master, there are elements in their life. There are moments that are transforming and uh, transforming moments in our lives. And I'm thankful, thank God, for the moments that we have with Him, the moments that we can see from the Word of God and be helped with. In Luke chapter number 23, I want us to begin reading in verse number 32 this morning. In verse number 32, we'll begin our reading. And uh, uh, there in verse 32, it says, And there were also two other malefactors uh, led with him to put, uh, be put to death. And when they came to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand, the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiments and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derived him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the, and the soldiers also mocked him, coming uh, to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also written uh, over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and, and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, we receive the due reward of our debts. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This passage of scripture will end our reading there this morning, verses 32 through verses number 43. I want to look at these, this passage of Scripture, and I titled it, A Telling Moment. We hear, we are able to see, and there's a lot that is said here at Calvary. It is a very telling moment. See, I believe the death of Jesus Christ is one of the most graphic scenes and descriptions of death that's recorded for us. They say the images would have been overwhelming for us if we were there to behold it. I know the descriptions that we have in Isaiah, the things that we know of that he went through in the Gospels. In the book of Revelation says we will view him as a lamb slain. 
I believe this, that we will see his marks of suffering that he made for you and for me. I believe that one day we'll behold, and I believe, yes, we are moved, and we ought to be moved on this side of eternity by the very truth of what he went through and what he suffered. But I believe the impact of it when we see it firsthand will move in our hearts and our lives. I was going to say this before I started preaching. Pray for Mike, uh, Kenny, and June. Uh, had a uh, breakdown this morning. That's where they're at. Pray for them if you would. But think about the very fact of the truth of what we see. What, is, what it says to us from Calvary, what it tells us. The scripture shows us all the pain that Jesus endured when he went to the cross to die for our sins. However, I want you to know that while the pain Jesus endured before enduring the crucifixion and the purpose of his death was to deal with this one element, the penalty of sin. That's why Jesus came. That's why he came to planet earth. That's why he condescended, was birthed of a virgin, and lived upon the face of this earth. The very fact, Jesus came to die for our sins according to the scriptures. See John eleven fifty. nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. One individual, he came to give himself See, the death of Jesus on the cross, yes, it was a painful event, and I'm sure it was more brutal and more horrible than anyone could even portray it. I could stand here this morning, and I could try to describe to you and paint you a mental picture, but I don't know that I could do it adequately. If I were a great artist, I don't know that an artist could take and on canvas and began to paint the picture to where we could really understand and see visibly with our eyes what took place there. And Isaiah 52, 14 says, As many were a stone at thee, his vesture, or his, uh, his vintage was so marred more than any man and his, his form more than the sons of men. Think about the element, the telling truth uh, from Scripture that tells us, I don't think you would recognize him. I don't think that you would, uh, you, the, when you looked upon him, would recognize him because of his marred vesture. And think about the, what he had been through. His beard plucked out. He was sped upon. He was beaten with a cat of nine tails. Um, they say that's horrific within itself. And he was mocked. And, and he had gone through all these things, a crown of thorns and mockery upon his head. He went through many things. The Bible also makes it clear that the death of Jesus was horrible. But again, I remind you, it's not about the pain. See, the death of Jesus, and we see the agony that he went through, we see the death of Jesus at Calvary served the purpose. Notice carefully in Isaiah 53, 1 through 6, it says, Whom hath believed our report? I think about that very first statement when he said, Who hath believed our report? Who could believe that anyone would go through this and, and face this and suffer through it? Who hath believed our report? And, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, nor when we 
that shall see Him, there is no beauty that we should desire Him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from Him. And He was despised, and we esteemed Him not. Surely He hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God. Oh my, and afflicted. But he was wounded. Here's the purpose. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. When we look at Isaiah 63, it tells us in the great detail of, to, to which he suffered, but it makes the pain over, it makes it plain over and over again that, it's, that, that he did it and why he did it. He did that for you and for me as individuals. The cross was not about pain, but it's about the payment of sin. The picture of the tabernacle and, and the sacrifices that was made by Israel. It was one noted thing. It was the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. It was what must be accomplished. See, in, in Mark 10, 45, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. For that day in the midst of his own pain and agony, he reached out, think about this, in love and compassion to save a lost sinner. And see, the, the reason he was born and lived and died and rose again, that, that summates it all in the very fact that he came to pay the penalty of sin for all mankind. As we look at this moment today, I want us to look, and I, I thought about the elements of this, a telling moment to help reveal some things to us. And this passage gives you and me three different viewpoints, and I want to look at one of them this morning. We'll look at the other two uh, this evening. Uh, think about the very fact of the viewpoints that we see from Calvary. Notice with me uh, as we examine it. First of all, we see the moment from a sinner's viewpoint. We see it the moment from a sinner's viewpoint. Notice with me in verse number 39. In verse number 39, we look and we see, And one of the male factors which was hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. We begin to see the voice of a sinner. And then you say, well, what kind of voice do we hear in, or in this viewpoint? What type of moment is it? It's a very tragic moment. We are told, notice the elements of this, and one of the male factors, we're told that this male factor, and that male factor, uh, do you, the description of that word and definition of that word is evildoer. This is the evildoer. He's a criminal. He has been caught. He's been convicted and he's been condemned for his crimes in which he's committed. This male factor. He's hanged. The verse tells us that he's paying for the penalty for the crimes that he committed. And after his trial, he would have been beaten and then taken outside the city and placed there uh, to a place of execution to be nailed to a cross. Now understand this, he's in agony and he's in die, he is dying, but understand the elements of this tragic moment. What makes it more tragic is that this, is a, this man who's about to die, he, uh, and he's about to die uh, like he has lived. You say, how did he live without God? In reckless abandonment. Away from God. Not wanting to have anything to do with God. That's the way the world, apart from God, lives. 
Man does not have a heart for righteousness. We do not come from the womb with halos over our head and living a perfect life. No, the psalmist David reminds us of our entry into this world. He said, we come forth from the womb speaking lies. There's one thing about it. <laughs> you know, I, when, when I was young, you know, after I was birthed, my mom and dad, they sent me to school. And, uh, but before I ever went to school, they didn't say, we want to specialize or send you to a specialized course on, on lying. We want you to know, uh, my dad didn't stand in front of me and says, we want you to know how to be a very deceitful person. We, we, we want you to be able to lie your way through life. He didn't do that. You say, why? Because it came naturally. Now, I don't know. I don't remember this. I remember doing some of this as I got older. And, but I don't remember the occasion that my mother said. And my, I don't know why. Don't hold this against me. I don't like it like this anymore. But, but when I was young... Uh, Mama said, I love, and my brother and my sister will tell, they tell this stuff on me. Half of it, I believe, is untrue, but any, neither of them say, they, they tell it. And they said, I love raw fat back. I, lo I, mean, I just like to get a piece and put it in my mouth and chew on it. I'm talking about side meat. And Mama said, uh, she said, I don't know what, I said, Mama, I don't know what possessed me on that. But she, she had big old butcher knives, what we call, you remember around home, the country folk had big, uh, had one fellow, Tim McCraw, he used to make, he made uh, butcher knives out of some kind of saw blade, and buddy, mama would keep them things sharp, and they would just fall through meat. Daddy would keep them a good edge on them. And she had a drawer, she kept those knives in, and she had told, don't you ever mess with that. And don't you? And she said, I told you, you stay out of the refrigerator and you leave that fat back alone. Now, there's something to being four years old and 60 pounds, amen. You can pull a lot of things open that don't need to be opened. I got a hold of, they said, I'd get a hold of that refrigerator door, they said, and I'd yank on that thing and he'd come open. I'd catch the side because I couldn't reach the handles. And I'd get that door open, and I'd get that fat back out, and I uh, said I'd slide a chair over to the counter. And, and let me say this, young kids, don't listen to what I did, amen. Just understand I'm telling you what's wrong, amen. <laughs> and uh, said I'd get one of those butcher knives out, and I remember doing this when I was older, and, uh, and I'd get one out, and I'd go over there and unwrap that meat, and I'd cut me off a piece, and then... I wrap it back up, put it in a refrigerator, go over and push the chair to the sink and turn the water on, rinse the knife off and take mama's uh, towel and dry it off. She had laying on the counter and go back and put it in the drawer and close the drawer and go just out playing, mm -hmm, having myself a time. But then I remember hearing my mama saying, Terry, she didn't say Terry, she said, Terry. And I come running into the, into the, uh, I come running into the uh, kitchen, sliding on her nice mop and glow floor with socks on. There's nothing that was more fun than that to slide halfway across that anodium floor, amen, on a good set of white socks, Brother Mike. And I'd come to a stop, and she says, I have a question. And that finger seemed like it was a mile long then. And she said, I have a question for you. Have you been in that meat? And I said, have you been in the refrigerator? And I said, no, ma'am. Have you been in that meat? And I said, no, ma'am. She said, I'm going to ask you one more time. Have you been in it? And I'd say, no. She said, I know you have. Then she'd open it up. You say, how did she know? My hack marks gave me away. Amen. When she cut it, it was smooth. <laughs> when I cut it, it was hacked up. 
You say, what would you do? Well, I don't want to tell you the rest of the story, but I, I, you know, I wasn't square dancing, but I was doing a jig, amen. She dealt with it. You say, well, who taught you and who told you? It was the nature that we have. We are born with that nature. And here as we look, we understand this man, he lived a wicked life and uh, he, he, he was headed to a lost eternity. He was without God. See, any, any life lived without God is a very tragic life. A tragic life. I sat in a business yesterday. I got up early yesterday morning and had to go to a business to, to get a couple things done on, uh, on the van that they did before, having to redo that before I go on the trip. And, uh, and, uh, and I took and, and I uh, went and I was sitting there and someone said, uh, why is all the scripture on the wall? And the, one of the fellows who works there he went in to, uh, to the restroom and he, uh, he came out and I saw someone had placed some tracks there and he walked into the office and he threw them in, in, the, uh, in the trash and then walked back out the door and looked at the other guy and says, now we have a respectable business. You say, you sat there quiet and didn't say a word. I said, no. you know, it's hard for me to be quiet sometimes. I said it would be nice if they were painted on the side of the building. And then he got to cussing back there about a bunch of stuff, and you could hear him all over the place. And then he came, the boss showed up, and when he walked out of the lobby, I said, Hey, I looked at the other pe people that was in there, and the guys were standing at the counter, and I said, Well, at least he didn't cuss while the boss was here. Hey, listen, let me say something to you. I, I told the lady sitting across, I says, more, the one, something irritates me is somebody says they're safe and then they turn around and cuss like a sailor. I said, I don't want anybody to come to New Heights Baptist Church to ever walk out the doors and talk some bad language. It makes a bad representation. Tell them you're from somewhere else if you want to talk and live like that without God. I said, it's sad. It's a sad day that we live. But let me say to you, uh, you know, I, I, I said, you know, I'm thankful I'm saved. It, it shows a bad representation on the church and for someone who says they're saved to do that, but it makes a bad representation toward God far more than the church. This man, his lifestyle showed that he was without God. He had no reverence towards God or the things of God. See, nothing awaited him but a Christless eternity in a place called hell. The Bible says this in Psalm 9, 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. It was a tragic moment. It was a, it was a telling moment. We're told that even through his own pain, this dying man, what does he do? He cries out, not for God, but he calls out in mockery of the Lord Jesus Christ. That word railed means to speak evil of or to blaspheme. Here he is dying and here he is hanging on the cross. The blood is dripping from his hands and his feet and probably from the whippings and the beatings that he's had. Uh, listen, and he's receiving a just payment for the crimes that he's committed. But even here he is in the last few breaths of, of life on this side of eternity and he's blaspheming and he's cursing God. What a horrible way to exit this world. He even questions the identity of Jesus when he uses the word if. Notice he said one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him and saying if, if he does not believe the testimony of Jesus, he does not believe uh, the sign hanging over the head of Jesus that proclaims him the king of the Jews. He is dying in a moment of anger and pain and torment. He lashes out at, every, at the very one who could make the difference in his eternity. 
He lashes out. By his words and actions, this man tells us where his heart is. This man is a perfect picture as I was thinking. And look at this verse of scripture. This man is a perfect picture of many in our world today. There are many who would never mock the name of Jesus out loud. But they do it every day by denying him. They deny the Lord. They say they believe in God, but they are, uh, uh, they are atheists in their beliefs. And they may not say that they're atheists in their beliefs, but their belief is this, that Jesus Christ is not who he says he is. He is not the Son of God that came to take away the sin of the world. They live as though God was dead. Oh my, what a tragic moment. A tragic moment in time. Now when we look at this male factor, we see to him that the name of Jesus was just a byword. He uses his name as other men would use to curse uh, the very fact of who God is. He's he ridiculed, he's hated, he's ignored, and he's vilified. He, he does these things toward the Lord. See, those who deny him with their lips and with their lives are telling us all we need to know about them. Their, uh, their heart toward God. But I move by the very aspect of mankind's actions toward God and their heart toward God. You say, are we to be angered by how the Lord is treated? No, it ought to cause us to love them more and pray for them more. When I think about the truth of Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God showed forth love just like that day that he hung up on the cross. Uh, listen, my friend, he showed forth love. He showed his heart for mankind by laying down his life as a ransom for men and for mankind if they would only come and trust while we were yet sinners. We should never be condemning the, here the aspect that we see in this tragic moment of that thief that's on the cross, uh, that thief that's on that cross as he, he begins and, and uh, to uh, ridicule and mock. Uh, we shouldn't have a hatred or a vile thoughts toward him. We are to be moved. What if it were you or me that stood in that place without salvation? We'd want someone to love us. See, we've experienced the love of God in our heart. You say, why should we pray for our loved ones? Why should we pray for our worker, co-workers? Why should we pray for our neighbor? Why should we have the love of God shed abroad in our hearts toward them? And listen, for love is of God. And he that loveth God, hey, listen, is born of God. And we're to have the heart of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Where would we be today if we were lost? You say, why is your heart so for the world that is lost? It's this, because apart from, uh, listen, if it were not for the grace of God and the love of God and the mercy of God in my life, it could be me that was out there with a bottle to his lips. It could be me that had a needle in his arm. I could be caught up in a lifestyle and live a wicked life or uh, live without God and then perish in hell. But I'm thankful today for the grace of God and the mercy of God that's trans for my heart and thank God thank God he still loved me when I didn't love him mm. 
The one on the right was no different than the one on the left, and the one on the left of Jesus was no different than the one on the right. And Jesus loved them both. And those, he said this, and Father, forgive them. Notice the scripture he said in verse 34, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Not only to love the ones that were on the cross, but his eyes beheld those that stood out in front of him. And he was dying for their sins. And he loved them just as much as those that hung on the cross. I love that song. Brother Lee, I think about it so many times. I've mentioned, I'm, I remember the first time that I heard that song when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. The phrasing in that song that really penetrates my heart, Brother Lee, is, listen, he looked down through time and he saw me. And when he looked down through time, he saw you. And you say, was he dying for those in the past that he saw in the past? Was he dying for those in the present? Was he dying for those in the future? My answer is yes, all of the above. He died for the sins of this world. He died for the sins of the world. And that course of that song says this, He knew me yet he loved me. The one that was railing on him and mocking him and ridiculing him and railing on him, he knew all about him and he loved him. For he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Here we see a picture in this moment from the sinner's viewpoint speaks of a world that which we live today. These 2,000 years later, people who are rejecting the Lord and turning their back on the Lord. Tonight I want to go in and I want us to look at a couple other viewpoints. But I want us to see this morning why we need to rejoice in the love of God and the grace of God that He is our Savior, that He's our friend. Let me say if you don't know Him today, today don't, don't shun Him. Don't turn Him aside. Don't push him away. Listen, have faith in him and trust in him because he wants to redeem you from your sins. And he will save you if you will receive him by the element of faith and trust and believe him. Father, today, thank you for your word. We see, a, we see several things in this passage. And Father, we looked at one of those viewpoints this morning. The view of, from the sinner. A rejection. Father, I pray for those that hear and that are under the sound of my voice, there will not be a rejection today, but there will be a step forward to receive Christ. Be a step made toward Jesus today. An element of faith as they believe and trust on you. We know this, that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Help those that hear my voice today to search their heart and know that they know you as their personal Savior. Father, help us that are saved today, look with a heart of love toward those around us and pray for them that they may, that we as individuals may have opportunity to point them to the one that loves them. 
And Father, we who have received the love of Christ and experienced the salvation of life, help us to rejoice in the grace that we have found. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Maybe there's someone, child of God, that your heart is burdened about. Will you find your place in an old-fashioned altar and pray for them? Say, God, listen, my heart's for them. My heart's heavy for them. God, help me to love them as you love them. Maybe today you're rejoicing the fact of God's goodness and grace. You want to come and you say, Lord, help. listen, Lord, I will just tell you, thank you for loving me when I didn't love you. Thank you for going to Calvary and dying for me. Thank you for shedding your life's blood for me. Maybe today you don't know him. Will you turn your heart and life to him? If you're watching by the way of media, there's a number on the screen. Will you text that number for any spiritual need that you may have? And someone will get back with you, respond to you. Listen today, if you're in the voice in the pres- under my voice in the presence of the auditorium, listen, you don't know him, trust him today. Father, today, thank you for your goodness and your grace. Lord, thank you for your mercy and your love toward us. I think about what, when we look at Calvary, and I think about this male factor, this one. My heart breaks. My heart is moved by the fact of someone not receiving, not placing their faith in a loving Savior. That should challenge us, Lord, to be faithful to the gospel and be faithful in our service and walk with you and telling others about the glorious Savior, lifting you high, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen. Do you remember that day that Jesus saved you? Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm thankful. Thank God. I'm thankful for that day that I trusted Him. Amen. And I know Him. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's, I want to sing this. I remember that day. I want us to sing just the chorus of Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. And we'll come in and hold that right there. And I'll come in with that. All right, that's going to be a challenge. Since Jesus came into my heart hallelujah since jesus came into my heart what's a joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since jesus came into my heart one more time since jesus came into Since Jesus came into my heart, praise His name, such a joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, thank you. Don't forget tonight at six o'clock. Be mindful of that. And, um, and make sure we keep practicing that social distancing. Amen. And uh, thank you for being here today. God bless you. You are dismissed. Amen.